rich. It is not sin to be rich. Bible speaking concerning this in the book of James chapter 16, verse 19 to 24. That is the story of a rich man who was clothed in a purple and in fine linen and face suckers the every day. Luke chapter 16 and verse 19 to 24. Jesus is making every believer to understand that it is not a sin to be rich. About the story of this rich fool. The rich fool, he said to himself, I will pull down my bags and I will build a bigger one. And I will store many goods and many things inside that we need to spare for many years. And I will say to my soul, sit down, eat, drink, and take life easy and merry. And he did not have any agenda of God inside all, inside all of his utterances. There's no anything about plan for God, about all these things that God has given unto him. And God looked down from heaven and said, today, behold, I'm going to require your life from you. It is not a sin to be rich, but God is interested in you that what you have in your hand is not your own. It is the master's goods. And the master does not like any servant that will waste his good. The money he gives to you is not your own. Where is the plan of God concerning that money that is in your hand? You must be able to have among your plans now as you are making your to-do list in this year and also include the area of God inside it because God, he can require your life of you at any time if you find that the person is not bringing any fruits to heaven. This person is just covering the ground and is not bearing any fruit. So, the church for a long time has been taught the theory that it's a sin to be rich. We dwell upon that uh, um, that parable where for Lazarus and the rich man and the, this premise whereby the uh, rich man was where, I mean was in purple clothes always and finding them and every day was very sometimes but there was a man at his gate, right in the front of the gate of this man, who was always designed to get the crumb that fall from the table of this rich man. But this rich man would not allow him, I mean, this rich man was enjoying himself, not minding that wretched and poor Lazarus wife that was at his gate. And it came to pass that the rich man died, and Lazarus also died. The rich man found himself in the bottom of hell fire. And Lazarus was at the feet, I mean, of, of the person of Abraham. And when the rich man in hell, he looked up and saw Lazarus um, at the person of Abraham, and he cried out, Lazarus, Lazarus, please tell Father Abraham to send you to me at least to dip your finger in water so that you can come and put it on my, on my, on my tongue because I am in great torment in this life. And every one of us will conclude with that story that once you are a rich man, it is synonymous to hell fire. Once you are poor in this world, it is synonymous to heaven. It is not so. There are lots of poor people that they are rushing to hell fire straight ahead. And there are lots of rich men that they are making to heaven. It depends on what you use the master's goods to do. The rich man here we are talking about in this book of Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to 24. He gave nothing to any man. He was about himself. He gave nothing to any man. He was about himself. All his plan is to eat, drink, enjoy life, and look good, and, and take life easy, and make merry. But he has nothing for God, who is the one that gave all this thing to him. Remember, no matter profession that you are into, whatsoever you gather from that profession or that work you are doing, it's God that gave it to you. Every profession, whether it is doctor, whether it is lawyer, whether it is uh, 
chief engineer, whether it's pilot. We are always having poor people in that profession. So there is not any profession that is a poor uh, person's profession. Whether you are a hairdresser, whether you are a barber, there are barbers that are millionaires. There are tailors that are millionaires. And so also we have even medical doctors that are very, very rich, very poor. We have professors that are stinkingly poor, stinkingly poor. So it is God himself that out of his good pleasure, that made your plan to succeed and that you are gathering great harvest and you are thinking it is your own strength by which you get all this thing. How wrong, how wrong it is for you to think that whatever you get is by your own power. Whatever you gather, that is by your own power. Very, very wrong. Very, very wrong. So, Jesus never said, if you enjoy in this world that you are going to have fire. He never said it with his mouth. In fact, the plan of God for you and I as children of Abraham in the book of Genesis chapter 12 verse 8 is that in blessing you bless us, in multiplying you multiply us, and saying through us all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So our second name as believers is blessing. God is not glorified when he sees his children becoming uh, a, a liability, becoming problem for community, becoming problem for, for the family. He is not glorified because silver and gold is in the hand of God. And he would rather like to give his children. However, love of money is the root of all evil. Bible is speaking concerning this in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. It says, But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful loss. We draw men in destruction and perdition for the love of money is the root of all evil. A lot of people that have not money, they have been into many temptation. Some, all they have labeled for all throughout the year because they want the money to double. They lost all of them to fall one night hand. Some are inside traps because they told them that you should come and take social money. But it's not so. They fall into the hands of the wicked that remove everything that they have. So, so many of them that are busy pursuing after money have fallen into many foolish and harmful lusts. Many foolish. Someone will ask them, are you so foolish like this? Someone asks you to go and bath uh, in such and such place and that money will come. Are you so foolish? Many are falling into many temptations and loss because they want money at all costs. Look, forgetting that God, he is the owner of genuine money. I mean durable riches. Durable. Riches that will last long. Riches that will uh, uh, transfer from you to your children's children. It is God that is the owner of them. However, our perception on how we spend money, we need to get it straight. When money, when God push money into your hand, many a time, which is very common to man, man will change his perception and his quality work with God. That is why we say that it is difficult for Carmen to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Let God push money into the hands of the man and see whether the man will be able to pay that out of it. The main thing that goes with God, I mean with money, when God bless you with money and money push is pushed to your side, is greed. Greed used to follow money. Greed in the area that you think of yourself only. It's like you are giving apple to a little child, and the little child went and grabbed the apple, and you say, please give me. The child will hide the apple at the back and say, it is my thing. It is my thing. He will never want to share the apple with anybody. The same way is for anyone who is a spiritual baby. When God bless you beyond your measure, beyond measure and you are surprised and say, okay, what is? Okay, I want to go and build us a village. That's the best thing in your mind. I want to go and uh, open a filling station. I want to go and do this. Have you ever thought of God 
Where is your own portion for this? And the book of Malachi chapter 3. And read some verse 10 that word. Say, and God said, All of you are cursed with the cause. Because all of you have robbed me. And in which way God have we robbed you? Say, You have robbed me in your diet and your offering. You have robbed me in your diet and offering. And all of you, you are under a cause. So the rich man, his problem was that he was stingy. He was stingy. He gave no man nothing. He doesn't give. He was stingy. So if you pay attention to what God is saying to you concerning your finances, if you pay attention to what God is saying to you uh, concerning your finances, you will know that you are not the owner of that money. Then you will be able to remember your God. Say, thou shalt remember that Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get to it. That he may establish the covenant which he made with thy fathers, even as it is this day. So as we are planning in the beginning of this year, we must remember our God, our Lord, and it starts from small. If God bless you with 1,000 naira, you can deal with it and say, I want to pay 100 naira to the house of God. For what? Every unit of commitment that you make for the house of God is coming back to you in 100 fold of the world. People like to spend money in public places and in a church whereby they do donation, they say if someone can come out now with one million dollars, I want to see some people stand up and see the person raise up because people will clap hands. But the person will not sit down between him and God and say, without church raising offering, without church raising a donation, and think within himself. If my God has been faithful to me with all of this that he has given to me, me too, I'm going to return back this one too. You don't need a pastor to shout say, let us make donations for how to buy land for church, how to build church, how to build the church. You don't need it because the master that gave you that money, he does not want you to waste his goods. He wants you to be rich on this earth and also rich towards heaven towards heaven because heaven is your ultimate place of abode. In the book of Mark chapter 10, a young man went to Jesus. Mark chapter 10, a young man went to Jesus and said, Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus turned to the young man. After he asked the question, the young man said, all you have said, I've kept the law for my duty. Is anything still remaining for me to do so that I can make eternal life? And Jesus answered and said, Only one thing is remaining, young man. Sell all you have. Sell all of them. Give the money to the poor. Carry your cross. Carry your cross and follow me. And when the young man heard the counsel of Jesus, he was exceedingly sorrowful. He was very sad. And he went his way. And Jesus Look, I'm going to disciple. It is more easier for coming to pass through the earth than that for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Because this man, he has great possession of goods. He has great things, plenty things in this world. But in the real perspective is that the young man did not have great goods. It is great goods that have him. May money not be the one that we have us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. A lot of people don't have money. No, they don't have money. It's money that is controlling them. They cannot control the money. If you are in charge of your money, you will be able to say money. See what I want with you to do. It's not the money that we tell you that will be your God. So what Jesus is saying to him in a clear pattern is that the place God is supposed to occupy in your life. It is money that's occupying it. So, sell all your goods so that greediness will be away from your life so that you can find a place in the kingdom of heaven. So that you can find a place in the kingdom of heaven. That is why you see rich men, they are always proud in their talking. Because when money comes, money gives a sense of uh, a sense of uh, being important in you, you become important within yourself and you don't afraid of anything when money comes in because you know that money can solve many problems. Even somebody you insulted the father said, 
your father has been like this and that, and the person is flying, and you say, Lord, my God, and you come some money, blah, 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 and you gave the person the money, and the person is so happy, you say, wow. Even this person is okay, my father. What has my father done for me since he was alive? But the money that you gave to that young man made your man to be happy. Money is very important, but we must have understanding that devil is as well is seeking to enter into your money, making greed, greediness to follow money so that whenever money enters your hand, you will be greedy about it and so that you will use avenue to shut heaven so that God will not bless you more. Because God is interested in seeing what you do with this one, he bless you with. What did you do to the house of God? That he wants to bring you another one. That he wants to bring you another one. Whenever Jesus says to all, I love you, the devil is always angry. And therefore, the devil always wants to convince the believer, say, Jesus never loved you at all. Jesus only wanted to uh, pack the money you have. Or he wanted to remove those things that you are using to post. Those things that make you to be mad. Jesus wanted to collect it. That's why Jesus said he loves you. It's not so. When Jesus said, I love you, he wants you to serve him. And you cannot serve God with an empty hand. You know, you something you will hold in your hand before God. The Bible tells us that we should not come to the house of God empty handed. Don't come to the house of God empty handed for what? Because of the work of God must move forward. It is money that is the vehicle that carries this message of God around the world. By Hello, when uh, the people of the world want to advertise secrets, they advertise secret every 30, 30 minutes. But when they I mean, to, to do their evangelism, you on your television within 30 minutes, you see tobacco, smoking, you see all these things, they spend a lot of money. They go to every people places. They advertise every, I mean, the secret. They go to your kiosk, your shop. They paint it for you. And they uh, put their signature on it and they draw their secret or how it is Coca Cola. They draw it on it and you are happy that they are doing you good. But when it is time for Christians to do evangelism, Christians say, Let us go into fasting and prayer.